buddies. Well, I thought I'd just pop in here for a short video. Not a, not a whole lot of um, accomplishment that happened this uh, last few days, but it has been a great few days, and I just needed to pop in here and talk with you guys. So, our weather has been um, turning to rain, I guess, but it's fascinating to me because it said in the news that this might be the driest May that Portland has ever had in a long, many, many, many years, which it's more rain than I'm used to, although when I listened to girlfriends on the other side of the mountain, they said it it's been pouring some days over in the high desert, which is usually pretty dry. So needless to say, I think everything's kind of on a tilt-a-whirl. Have you ever ridden those tilt-a-whirls? Do you remember those things? I used to try to spin it as fast as I can, and my sister would just get sick. She just get, She did not like those things. But today I'm just, uh, we did some errands this morning, um, went to, we happened to be really close to a Costco. Uh, G had to go, didn't have to, but he wanted to go to a guitar center. And uh, so we thought we'd just pop over to Costco. Well, there's no popping over to Costco. I've never seen it so busy uh, it was crazy, and it made me wonder, why Why are we shopping at Costco? <laughs> you know, it's just the two of us. <laughs> but giving up your Costco card, oh my gosh, maybe, maybe that's part of the stick, is that when a place gives you a card, a membership card, you feel like you're important to them. <laughs> Well, anyway, it was really, really packed. So I'm still tacking binding down. I'm trying to get this one done. Um, that's a Christmas present so that I can uh, move on to the crazy log cabin quilt. And when I was looking for binding for that quilt, it may, it reminded me that... I was not going to bind it because I could not find in all my stash the right color of navy blue, kind of a hue of navy blue, that wouldn't make me feel like I was adding an entirely different element to the quilt with the binding. And so I had decided way a while ago that I was going to face that quilt and I totally forgot about it till I started looking for binding fabric again and then I thought oh no I was going to face this quilt so I'm going to be uh, doing that uh, I'm going to start doing that today cutting the strips out and I have a if anybody wants to know what facing is if you're not familiar with the term if you Google quilt roadies facing uh, the quilt, it, it, a video will come up where I showed how I did it. But facing a quilt just means that you're not binding it with a, a fabric that shows on the front. So it's, it's not meant for all uh, quilts. Um, but for those of you who've been here a bit of time, that uh, the last, that modern quilt that I made that's hanging downstairs, I faced that one. Of course, now I'm just like drawing a blank on the name of that quilt. I tell you, do you ever feel like that? Like, man, I need, I need uh, some, whatever they're selling on TV, you know, um, whatever they're selling on TV that they use. <laughs> makes you remember better. You know what I'm talking about. It's like, oh yeah, I tell you, if I ever forget G's name, that, that's when I'm calling it in. Yep. That's when I'm throwing in the towel. <laughs> yeah, 
it's so hard. It's so hard to uh, struggle with that. And then to, then when you hear about people who are, you know, every, it seems like every week someone goes off hiking. I worry about G. Goes off hiking and, and can't find their way back home. And so they, they have to, they're all looking for him. Well, the last guy, they found him. 17 days later, they found him, and he was okay. He was just <laughs> lost. Oh. See, I married a cartographer for a reason, so I never had to worry about being lost. Um, yeah, I had a fabulous day uh, yesterday with my family. It was the first time in over a year, we always say that, pre-COVID, you know, uh, where I had uh, both my sons, their wives, and their children here at the house. It was, oh, so awesome. So I had to make Korean dinner because, you know, I, I wanted that whole, I wanted the whole package. I wanted the whole feel good from childhood and all the feel good things. And so I made um, what's called a chapje. And it is um, a sweet potato noodle. But the, it, it, it seems like a labor intensive dish, but it really isn't. I, I double checked with my sister to make sure that I had all of the right ingredients, but it's basically um, very easy to make it um, vegan or vegetarian. Um, the traditional japche has a little bit of beef in it, but I just didn't put the beef in it. But every vegetable that you put in the dish, um, is cooked separately. You stir fry it separately till it's almost done. And then when you get the noodles cooked, then you add all the vegetables and it's like this big noodle stir fry. My mouth is drooling. And uh, it is so good. And japje um, is spelt with a J. Japje. Uh, but it turned out great. And I made a little bit of panchan, which is um, these little side dishes of vegetables. And the panchan I made was a spinach, um, spinach chopped up with, uh, you know, you cook it, you cook it real fast, and then you blanch it with cold water, uh, and then you squeeze all the water out, and you chop it up, and you add onion and uh, garlic and um, soy sauce and rice vinegar and then you chill it and you sprinkle the top with roasted uh, sesame seeds. Oh, so good. And then we have brown rice and we have seaweed and because my older son and his family are not uh, vegan, um, we went and um, bought some Thin sliced beef that uh, G made a marinade for. It's and it's in uh, Korean beef is called bulgogi, bulgogi, and so we made that, and that, and then we sent the leftovers home with them, and uh, and then G made his special sauce and grilled up some tofu and oh gosh, it was a fabulous dinner. What can I say? And then to have my grandchildren playing together and oh it's just my oldest grandson is just the sweetest boy you know here he is nine years old and he was willing to play with a, a, a three-year-old you know yeah so it was a uh, let me just say uh, as my older daughter-in-law said you're you're in your element aren't you and I was like yes yes it was so awesome so just so you know that I do get something accomplished once in a while, well, where's that sign that says deadlines amuse me? All I need is a deadline. 
I mean, I was that kid in, you know, I mean, I, I remember my dad telling me one time when I came home from um, high school in, uh, one evening, and he said, you know, my dad was a, a, a fairly well-known businessman uh, in his later years, and um, his later years, he passed away when he was 49, but um, he told me one day, he said, you know, Anna, you would be a straight-A student if you actually went in the library instead of hung out in the parking lot. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but I'm on the National Honor Society and I, and I don't have to do anything. <laughs> was just such a brat. I was such a brat. But it I was a chip off the old block. I mean, my dad was the same way. I mean, he, I know that when he looked at me, he was like looking in the mirror. But uh, I have and I have this sign someplace in here that says deadlines amuse me. Give me a deadline and the day before I'll get to it and get it done. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I studied for finals the day before. It was like, even when I took my nursing boards, um, you know, my uh, girlfriend and I, who went up together to take our nursing boards, we, um, we were at a hotel where all the people in the hotel were student nurses who were there to take the nursing boards. It was held in, in the state in one place. And everybody was studying. And she and I were like in the hot tub and, and you know, having a good old time. And, and I remember saying that, why are they studying the night before the boards? If you don't know it by then, you're not gonna know it, you know. You have to have, you have to, you know. It just didn't make any sense to me. Well, <laughs> it was kind of funny. It's different, different strokes for different folks, though, isn't it? I mean, some people feel I've had um, roommates who felt more comfortable, um, uh, and it probably was a whole lot less stressful to actually study as you go along. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Everybody's different. And that's what makes the world so absolutely fabulous, is that everybody is different. I can remember my mom was a lifelong learner. She called herself a lifelong learner. And when you'd ride in the car with her, she'd have her hands on the steering wheel and her finger was always going like this all the time because she was either calculating some math problem or writing something or learning how to spell something. She was, her index finger probably <laughs> would need a brace as much as she used her index finger. So... Oh, but I wanted to show you, I wanted to share with you, I brought along uh, here into the beehive the framed postcards because, oh, I got distracted. <laughs> I was talking about how I do accomplish something once in a while under duress, under pressure, and I got my postcard done, so I have to pop it in the mail. And boy, I, I'm kind of nervous about that after reading you know, some of the comments where people said they sent postcards even in an envelope and it, they haven't arrived. I was like, oh man, I'm almost nervous to send this postcard. But it's for a fundraiser. And um, so, what are fabric postcards? You know, they're a standard size postcard size, you know, so if you were to buy, if you were to go into a, a card shop or into a national park and you wanted to send a tourist place and you want to send a postcard, that size of the postcard is what 
a fabric postcard is made out of. And years ago, um, the fabric postcards in Sisters, Oregon, that were part of the um, quilt show, were in honor of Wendy, who was quite the quilter and crafter. She, she just did all kinds of crafting. And she sold her crafts, and oh, she was just such an inspiration. But when she passed away, um, people got together and said to fundraise. Um, and I'm trying to remember, it was an awesome, awesome fundraiser. Because the money they raised wasn't used for research. Now, don't hold me to it. I'm just pulling out of the memory who can't remember who was playing in that TV show last night. But um, if I remember correctly, the money raised for that fundraiser was used to help people pay their bills, their month to month bills, if they were undergoing chemo, you know, had major health issues and were being treated um, in the hospital um, long term, they could um, apply for um, help and, you know, like they would pay for the electric bill for that month and that, that so it was an awesome um, person to person um, event and that went on for many many years and then it eventually morphed into a fundraiser for um, the arts, music and arts, uh, to support the music and arts in the school and uh, that's been the last handful of years. But it's an awesome way to raise money. And anybody, if you go on to the Sisters Outdoor Quilt uh, Show site, anybody can make a postcard and donate it. And they sell them. They, uh, they actually even have a contest that is sponsored by one of the fabric manufacturers where you use some of their fabric, that year's line of fabric, to make a postcard. And then, uh, like, the the very top ones are framed and then sold and auctioned off. But the part that I'm involved in is for the um, people who support the Quilters Affair, who are teachers at the Quilters Affair, they ask each teacher to make a postcard and then those cards get framed and are auctioned off in a silent auction that runs all week. And it's so dramatic. It's just so dramatic because it you can, you know, silent auction, just kind of write your name down and put the price or you could outright buy it. If you wanted to pay the full price, and some of those are like $500, uh, and they're worth every penny. It's like a piece of art, and the framing is spectacular. Um, but you could uh, bid up by, I think they said like $10 or $20 you could add in the silent auction. And then at noon on Friday, there's a countdown where you can try to get your last minute bid in and it's so exciting. It's always done during the lunchtime of the Quilters Affair and oh, it's just the things we missed the last couple years. Well, they're going to be running it a little differently because it'll be probably virtual uh, auction, I would think. But I wanted to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I have become the owner of some postcards. I have one that's hanging down in the living room. I didn't go get that one, but that was um, one made by Tony Belinda Phillips. I just love it. G hung it right in the right spot. And then, um, la uh, two years ago, I'm going last year. There was no last year, was there? Two years ago, um, I was able to get this postcard 
and this is made by Carla Alexander. She's in Salem, Oregon. She's a, art, a quilt artist, and I, when I saw it, I knew immediately that I had to have that postcard because what Carla had done was take a topographical map of sisters and made a postcard out of it. And I had to get it for G because he's a cartographer. Well, no one really understood that when I was there looking at it, nobody quite understood. And I heard one lady go, is that a turtle? I just laughed because I knew what it was and I knew I was going to get it. It was going to be a present. And I was so excited because now I got it. I won the auction and I immediately came home. G was out of town and I hung it up in our great room. And as soon as he walked in, he saw it and he walked over and he goes, Oh, a topographical map of sisters was perfect. It was perfect. But here it is. Isn't it beautiful? And the framing is so amazing. The framing is so amazing. It's just, um, I'm flabbergasted by the, by the artistic talent of people. And these, uh, these ones were framed by High Desert Frameworks. She does extraordinary framing. And um, has museum glass on it. And just so you know, you have to look at this again. Just so you know, those are each individual little tiny pieces of fabric. And that this is the size of a standard size postcard. You know how much work that is? Oh, it's extraordinary. Just extraordinary. And she captured it perfectly. Yeah. And then, you know, I had to, I had to get this one because after all, Jean Wells is I would say the honorary queen of sisters. I mean, really, the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show put sisters on the map. And I just wanted to remember that and to know that and to have a piece of that no matter where I went. And so this, um, this card was made by Jean Wells. Sisters Oregon in her traditional modern style <coughs> um, now this one I bought a while ago because this was when it was a fundraiser for Wendy's Wish isn't that just beautiful she has such a way such a way of bringing the outside in. Mm. <coughs> so, I made my postcard. Oh, I forgot to show you mine. <laughs> so, my postcard that I made, um, well, let's see, when was this? 2017's postcard. Um, I actually bought my own postcard. <laughs> I, I always blush when I say that I bought my own postcard. And it's not because I couldn't just make another postcard if I wanted, you know. I could have made two of them. But it was the framing. And the framing sometimes is just a one-time shot, you know. <coughs> if she, um has the particular things that you need to frame. Oh, I fell in love with the frame. So, here's my postcard. It's wool, wool stitched, 
and the background fabric that I stitched the wool on, each one of those leaves is a little piece of wool. It, the background fabric is a musical script, you know, like pages from a music book. But look at how she cut the mat. And then look at the frame. It's music. It's music. I, I nearly fell over. I mean, I just, I had to have it because of the frame. So the next year, <laughs> in 2018, I told her, do not choose a frame that I have to have. <laughs> but I just love it. It has a little pair of scissors. Oh, it's just, I just love this. Yeah. So fun. So fun. So I got the letter from Jean that said, Hey, all you people that are teaching or supporting the teachers at the Quilters Affair virtual event, can you make a postcard? I said, Okay, I can make a postcard, but let me think about this. What do I want to do? And I decided that I was going to combine my love of cross stitch into the postcard and so as you know I well if you watch that stitch roadie video not all of you are stitch roadies and not all stitch roadies are quilt roadies but um, I finished my postcard I love the way it turned out I used uh, a freebie pattern by Liz Matthews who I will credit for the pattern, and um, I cross-stitch it on 40 count, a scrap of 40 count I have, so I don't even know the name, and I used a variegated uh, cranberry, I believe it was, to stitch it, and then I had to find just the perfect charm that I wanted to add to it. So the way you do these, let me just show you my card, so I have to put it in the mail and send it to Jean. I'm kind of nervous about that. Didn't it turn out great? So this is the size of a postcard. And um, I had to do it on 40 count to get the image to fit on the, the side, size of a postcard. But um, I wanted to, it actually had one of these little things stitched in there, but I wanted to add a little heart charm in the center of hope. And I felt like this was the perfect message for this year. And I I just knew right away. It's like I knew right away. Now normally when you're doing a fabric postcard you make the back like a muslin color and you actually put what you would see on the back of a postcard, the return address area, the sender and the receiver address and, and a place for the stamp and that kind of thing. But because I knew this was going to get framed, I decided to just put some really pretty fabric on the back. And this is Kelly Ray Roberts' uh, latest line of fabric. And I just love that. So the way I did this, Jean sent out a piece, uh, a postcard size piece of the Tinslet. I think it's called Tinslet. It's kind of a little stiff, um, somewhat fusible piece in there. That's why it's kind of stiff. And <clears throat> I ironed my piece here onto the same size piece of fusible batting. So I have fusible batting. I have that Tinslet, <laughs> I think it's called. And then I have my backing. And I ironed them all together on my wool mat. So they stuck together. And then this is the most stressful part for me, is sewing that edge. Because I want it to be perfect. Although most of the time it gets framed out. 
and I use a satin stitch, a zigzag, kind of zigzag stitch all around. So it takes me a little bit, to, like three or four tries, to find exactly the tightness that I want and the width that I want. And I test it on f the same fabric so that I know what that's going to be like. And then I go around twice just to get it that finished tight thing. Now, if you noticed here, and on two of these, they you don't even see that sewn edge. But Carla, which you have the option to do also, Carla actually did a binding around hers, and that became part of the piece of artwork. But I just decided to do that satin stitch and let the framer do what she wants. But I, I just really felt like this was um, the perfect measure, uh, the the perfect message that I wanted for this year. And um, I really am happy the way it turned out. And I know the framer will. Um, I'm not sure who they're using for framing this year. We'll make it so that it's even and it look it'll look great. It'll look great. I'm really looking forward to that. So yeah. So I got one task done. I actually got us something done. So that <laughs> that's you know, done is a good word. Done is a good word. And then I have to show you this little thing. Um, this fell out of one of the packages that I received. Thank goodness I didn't throw it away. I was like going through the packages and writing my thank you notes and stuff. And then I was gathering all the mailers up to throw away. <clears throat> and something was in there. And so I'm digging around to the bottom. And this little thing fell out. Have you ever seen one of these? I mean, look at how big it is. It's like one knuckle of my thumb. And I was going, what is this? Look at this. There's a little slide on here and little tiny scissors. And then you press this thing and it is sharp. It is sharp. And then when you want it to go back, you just slide that back down and the little scissors go back inside that little case. Oh, this is the kind of thing we all need on an airplane. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, so later today I'm going to be working on my facing binding. I want to think about, I have, I just, you know, when I calculated all the little birthdays that are coming up for me and trips and things, I just was like, oh my gosh. I am. Um, I've got a lot on my list I've got to take care of. But it's all, it's all a good time, isn't it? My garden is growing fantastic. We finally got all of the irrigation problems solved. And um, now can feel comfortable that we're not wasting water because there was a leak. And, um, and my vegetables are doing good. My roses are starting to bloom. That's the thing is Portland is called the city of roses because Rose City because of it's the perfect perfect climate for roses. And so I have like I must have 6 or 7 rose bushes uh, around and um, they all have dozens of 
um, potential flowers on them. Yeah. Well, that was the other thing, to see those grandkids playing in that little creek behind us and having the best time. Now that we have that all solved, um, the ducks have come back. So that's fun. Yeah, this time of year has a lot, it brings a lot of joy because you, it's like a renewal in a way, isn't it? And, um, looking forward to a lot going on this summer. I have so much to, so much that I want to do. I mean, just sitting here and I'm looking at these, um, books, these quilting books, and I just go, whoa, I want to do this. Look at this one. This one. And then there's um, a cottage garden. Kathy Cardiff. Love that. Spelling Bee. Lori Holt, be in my bonnet. Just so much fun. So much fun ahead for all of us. We just have to embrace it. Don't feel overwhelmed by all of that that you have. Feel that your well is filled and that this is so much potential. It's just so much potential. And I just love it all. I love it all. I'm kind of excited to get... Um, I know over the next um, summer, this coming summer, I'm going to be prepping, not sewing, but prepping um, a handful of projects for my quilt retreat in September. So that all I can, all I have to do is just power sew and, and you know, you always leave retreat. At least I do. I always leave retreat as if I created magic. Because it, um, because I prep for retreat. And then you feel like you got so much done. I mean, everybody feels awesome when they leave retreat, in our group anyway. Um, and I'm, I'm bound and determined that I'm going to be having things uh, pre-cut and uh, have my, what I want to stitch. Yes. Yes. That's what we're going to do. This summer is going to be filled with the door wide open. How about you, huh? <clears throat> Gardening, seeing people again, sitting out, sitting in a garden and having uh, tea or coffee or with friends. Isn't that awesome? I mean, I could go a long time now having just had my well filled yesterday with that one family gathering. It was, yeah, we can do it. We can do it, huh? Okay, well, thank you for just stopping by for this. I hope it's this quick thing. And and then we'll get on to, the, to some working videos, huh? And not just some jabbering videos. I love you guys. Have fun. Take care.